So I checked out my stats and it says 94% of you guys are not subscribed. So remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's start. Final Fantasy XIV isn't the game you think it is. What does it mean by that? Let's find out. Final Fantasy XIV is not the game you think it is. Maybe you're a well-established player, or a former player, or maybe you've been watching from afar as your favorite content creators slowly migrate, making their way through the emotional minefield that is this game's story, desperately yet patiently waiting for them to realize the same thing as you. Game bad. <gasps> Omega lol. Well, fellow human, this video is for you. Or just some of you. Or all of you. No, let's just watch the video. Okay, before we dive in, let me give you a little bit of context for why I'm making this video. I absolutely love Final Fantasy XIV. I've played through the like entirety it's of like the game baby. as of patch 5.55, and I've completed all of the store Corey content the game has to offer. I can't stress enough just how emotionally invested I am in the story and its characters. But it wasn't always that way. I tried and quit Final Fantasy XIV two times over the oh, last the six years. I tried once during Heaven's Ward, its first expansion, award-winning and included in the free trial, by the way, and then again in Stormblood, just before Shadowbringers launched. Some parts of the game changed, but the reason that I quit was still the same. A oh, Realm amazing. Reborn's main f***ing story quests. The combat was adequate, albeit a bit slower than I was used to. Some of the boss I fights knew it was ARR. pretty awesome, but I just couldn't sit through the endless hours of mandatory text dialogue and cutscenes. They would go on and on, regaling me with tales of primals and beast tribes. My friends would tell me, bro, you just gotta hold out, bro. It gets good so good, bro. Please, bro, you gotta pay attention, bro. I'll suck your dude. Stop. <laughs> I don't have the patience for that. I love <laughs> stories and games. I'm a huge Dungeons and Dragons nerd. I'm a proper whore for lore, but in the end, I just couldn't stomach it. Or at least I couldn't, uh, until I could. I decided to give the game another shot in May of the second Umbral era, COVID-2021, and I told myself that since a bunch of my friends had recently started playing, I would give it another shot, seeing as it was free to play up until level 60. Oh yeah, it totally I mean, helps if you're playing with friends do through with ARR. that free time? Go outside? <laughs> and it was cool, I guess. It was nice to be able to connect with all these friends again, but still always in the back of my mind. And in the top left of my screen, it whispered, do me. I honestly struggled to do it, and I would spend weeks making no progress while everyone around me soared onwards towards the great beyond, the promised land, Heaven's Ward. But I did not give in. Neck deep in political strife and betrayal, did I stride until before the gates of Ishgard, I came. I had made it, and I was forced to accept an uncomfortable truth, that my friends could be right. And by following the Yellow Box Road, I was growing to love this world, its characters, and its bold storytelling. From there, it wasn't quite smooth sailing, but Damn, I at wait, least wait, 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 wait. I feel like I missed something there. I never doubted that you'd come. Yep. From there, it wasn't quite smooth sailing, but I at least had come to accept that this game had value beyond the generic staples of MMO design that tickled just the right parts of my monkey mind. I was tickled. in. But even then, I honestly had no clue as to the ride I had strapped in for. But that's enough of that. Let's get in to the good sh the ARR smack talk. I mean, I jest. Partially. 
I just... A Realm Reborn, even for its time, was curious. It was an MMORPG, a game in a genre not typically known for its quality storytelling. But it was also a Final Fantasy game, and anyone who has spent any amount of considerable time playing an entry in the franchise knows that when you boot up, you best hook up that catheter. Look, the games love their cutscenes, and 14 is no different in that regard. That's a hard sell for some people, especially veteran MMO gamers who aren't exactly known for their... let's call it... patience. The presentation holds up pretty well for a game that's almost a decade old, but the narrative and script often feel more 1613 than 2013. The dialogue frequently reads like a Shakespearean tragedy, and is bloated by an absolutely absurd amount of self filating lore dumps that would make even George R. R. Martin blush. It's fucking rad, but it's not well adjusted to a Tik Tolkien era audience that probably left 59 seconds into this video because I, see I what didn't he's saying. look like this. Or this. It's too literary for most people. And sometimes I caught myself wondering how much my time was being valued. Okay, 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 okay. Before you press enter on that white hot parasocial infused comment down below, remember that you are definitely not in a cult. And I promise this is going somewhere. I really do love this game. Like, a lot. And having played through the entire story as it currently exists, I recognize in retrospect how important all of that stuff was. Truthfully, I am so grateful for the attention to detail in A Realm Reborn's writing, because it provides a rock-solid foundation upon which the more emotionally driven tales can be told. But that doesn't mean it's a good introduction to the game. In fact, I'd go so far as to say it's a poor representation of the game as a whole. Just to clarify, It'll not make a lot bad. of people go away Just at the beginning. Just not a good representation of the larger game. I do agree on that. what he's saying, that ARR is the hardest mountain to climb, and it isn't the best representation of the overall game, yes, because it does get better and better and better. And a lot of people will go away. Like, after they try ARR, they tend to like leave and never come back. And then once you go past it, then you're just like committed and you are a true Final Fantasy 14 fan. Yeah, you either quit AR or you become like a true fan, <laughs> basically. And also the people who start playing Final Fantasy 14, they don't realize that this ARR was all made when 1.0 still was around. And they had to like make ARR in a year only. In a year! The game is really, really, really good for what they made in a year. And, you know, just converting all the people going into um, 1.0 to the new Final Fantasy. But yes, as time moved, you know, like it's what, 2021 now? There's like new players probably coming in. And they're just like used to all those these games that are like very fast paced. And like his example was like the TikTok videos where TikTok videos are only like, what, a minute long? Well, now you can have up to three minute long videos on TikTok. But, you know, in short, a lot of info really fast is like the kind of trend right now. So I can see a lot of people jumping into Final Fantasy 14 for the first time and just going, yeah, this is not for me because it's too slow for me. And, you know, a lot of people are impatient. Even I, even I'm impatient. But since, and the only reason why I started playing it is because I had more time. And I was willing to let Final Fantasy be that game for me that I focused on. But if I was playing any other game, focusing on any other main game for my streaming, it would have been very hard for me to play Final Fantasy 14. Because I went through ARR and it was tough too. But I'm glad I went through it. I think most people would say like, I'm so glad we went through it. But if there was like a way we could like shorten it a little bit, I don't know how. I, I heard they already did. I heard like it used to be much long. ARR used to be much longer and they did their best to already shorten it. And so I don't know if they can shorten it even more. So I do see what he's saying. But yeah, it does. it's not a good representation for the rest of the game. Think of all the people who would have liked the game 
had they seen everything after ARR, but already left. The gameplay in Final Fantasy XIV is slower than what most people have come to associate with the modern MMO. While the majority of other games in the genre have taken it upon themselves to compete over who can fuck up my wrists the fastest, 14 has, for the most part, maintained its more methodical approach to combat. As you level, you get more skills to add to your rotation. And depending on what job or class you're playing, you might rack up a good number of them that can be used outside of the typical 2.5 second global cooldown window. But getting there takes a lot of time. Time in which most people will have made up their minds about how engaging they feel the game is mechanically at least. I played a black mage during my time in ARR and I hated it. If I wanted to cast the same two spells over and over again, giving me more than enough time to contemplate the poor life choices that led me to that point, I'd play something else, like New World. But as soon as I switched to Red Mage, which essentially allows you to instantly throw out a spell between each hard cast, I was thriving. It's not that Black Mage is bad I want those shades. and you should feel bad for liking it. The job is actually so highly regarded within the community that pretty much anyone who even claims to play it is appointed the formal title of Giga Chad. But even then, most people will agree that it's just not a good representation of the game's combat up until level 50. There are some other issues with the onboarding process like the web services being an absolute nightmare oh, to yeah. navigate and the UI that being a bit intimidating at first. But I don't yeah. really want to Can talk be. about those things because they're boring. So if you've made <laughs> it this far, thank you very, very much for bearing with me, especially those of you who, like myself, are massive fans of the game. Not a cult. We've arrived at the part of the video where I try to actually sell this experience in spite of all those things I've just said. And some things I still have to say. Sorry. Okay, um, before he gets into that, I wanted to quickly talk about the UIs. Yes, it's very overwhelming. Some people either like, like it or not like it, the UI at the very beginning. I don't mind it. And I definitely think it grew on me more and more. And like, it made me actually really like the UI. I still compare Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 14's UI to other games. And I think it does hold up pretty nicely. It's just confusing because there's a lot, there's a lot of things. And it's like, how are you gonna like put all these customization and all these things into your game? The fact that it has so many options, they did a really, really, really good job with their UI putting all that info and all those customization options into their game. I think they did a really good job. Yes, the map just takes some time to get used to a little bit. I invited my friend to play Final Fantasy 14 and he decided to play Final Fantasy 14 for the first time on his PlayStation and I couldn't help him because I don't play on a PlayStation so I have no idea like what it even looks like for him. I don't know if it's technically harder. I don't know if it's technically more overwhelming than a PC. Every time I introduce like a new player or a friend of mine to Final Fantasy 14, I try to make their, you know, their game experience as soon as they jump in as smooth as possible, trying to give them all like the go-to things are like, okay, this is important. You should need to know how to do this and that like that, but I can't help him with PlayStation. I definitely don't mind the UI at all in Final Fantasy. Yeah, it's actually quite nice. You know what I don't get though? Why do people really like the blue menu color more than the gray? I get it that it's like, oh, this is like the old Final Fantasy games, you know? But I find it harder to look at, especially like, you know, being in 2021, I kind of like, the, I kind of like the gray menus way more than the blue ones. The blue is just so jarring almost. Yeah, it's the classic menu. I know I played Final Fantasy 7 and, and other Final Fantasies, but I still find it like very old school. I guess they just want to, yeah, it's nostalgic and they want that old school vibe, but I want new school Final Fantasy, you know? I'm all for like dark mode these days, guys. I'm definitely one of those people who are like white mode, white mode, ah, shh. Get it away from me and like the blue mode the blue menus just look like that to me it's like oh why would you do that to your eyes it hurts Final fantasy 14 isn't the game you think it is 
If you stopped playing in ARR for the same reasons that I did, or are putting off trying it entirely by similar complaints that you've heard, I understand. It is perfectly reasonable to decide that this experience is insurmountable to you. You shouldn't feel like you need to invest upwards of 50 hours just to get to the good stuff, even if it's free, even if the community screams that it gets better and that you won't regret it. That's not enough of an incentive for some people. They need to feel that themselves. However, yeah. if it is, you will be graced with one of the most ambitious, epic, and emotionally rich stories that the entirety of gaming has to offer. It has immense scope, weight, and consequences, leaving your heartstrings twisted and disfigured beyond recognition. You see, Final Fantasy isn't one of those games in the genre that you slowly learn to hate more and more because it hurts for you to continue to play it. Yeah, it's better and better. It's one of those games that you learn to love because of how much it continues to hurt your feelings while you play. Dude, this game knows how to make me f***ing cry. I've cried like five times. Oh, There's I was blocking Pyro and... family, love, loss, guilt, sacrifice, and most importantly, despite all of that, hope. It is one of the grandest adventures that I have ever experienced, and it just keeps getting better. I am legitimately so damn excited to see how the current story, almost a decade in the making, comes to a close. However, if you're anything like me, and you struggled to sit through ARR, you really don't have a good sense of any of that. So what changed? Well, for one, the lead writers. What we get at the beginning is a well-written, albeit off-pace tale of political intrigue and subterfuge. There's a lot to praise in the early content, don't get me wrong, but the incredible character moments and plot twists at times feel drowned out by the 15-minute monologues and info dumps. It's meticulously written to a fault. Maybe it's because of the disaster that was the original game, but there are moments that scream of a desperation for validation. Things are different now. We promise we're a real fantasy game. Please come back. It takes a bit of time to hit its stride. Again, 10 year old game struggling under the weight of its initial failures but holy hell does it have momentum once it does. As the game reaches maturity in its later installments, the story moves away from its bookish roots and flourishes into something much more cinematic, an approach that we've become accustomed to in modern gaming. On top of that, it doubles down on the much more accessible approach of telling the majority of the story through the experience of its characters, instead of forcing you to sit through hours of exposition. I had a hard time reading ARR too. Like actually trying to read it out loud on stream. You guys remember? It was maybe because I started in Limsa Lominsa and it was all that pirate talk. It was really hard. And yeah, it felt like text boxes after text boxes. And it's really hard to do on stream, actually. You're just like, I wish I could skim read this, please. But I'm trying to, you know, trying to read it out loud to my community. And every time I was like, you know what, chat, I think I'm going to like just skim read this. Do you guys remember? I was like, I'm going to just read this, skim read this myself and I won't, I won't read it out loud. And maybe sometimes I would even skip it. People in my chat were like, why are you skipping? I was like, man, but it's ARR. <laughs> it's so hard. So hard not to skip it. And then once I entered Heaven's Word, I gave it a chance again. I started reading. I started reading again out to you guys. And then I was like, hey, this is actually pretty good. I'm glad that it doesn't have to give me like five text boxes just to explain something. Rather like two text boxes or something. And that was way better. The old English kind of cut down a little bit. Only Uri Anger has that. <laughs> the pirate talk lessened, so that was helpful. It got better and better for me to actually read the story on stream. Most of it like that was for me too, Sekra. I would also skim read a lot. And when it came to like the jobs that you would deliver things to, I skipped 
all of the the things that you talk with those random people that you deliver stuff to that all i skipped i was like yep here you go skip skip skip, skip. here you go skip, skip skip and then go back to the main story and i'll be like skim read mm-hmm, mm-hmm, go and then like cut scene happens and then the voices are, are there and i'm like all right i'm gonna watch this because i don't want to miss out on anything important so yeah that was basically arr for me and here's the thing the main characters back then i was just like yeah they're okay a lot of them i was like they're okay you sure she's hot her character was kind of cool even in arr but nothing like to what i like now with her her now is like way better and even sancred sancred is a very good example of a character in arr that i did not care about and now i really like sancred because his story came out more in Shadowbringers where he became more of a father figure to Minfilia. And then now I like Thancred a lot. Uh, I guess Heavensward was like the expansion for me that was like, hey, you should read again. We're cool characters. So that's what did it for me. A Realm Reborn has a bad habit of telling you why something is important. While expansions like Shadowbringers show you why it's important to the people you've come to care about, it's a completely different experience. I care a lot more about what happened to my second husbando three years ago, and how that changed him as a person, than I care about what happened during a war that I wasn't a part of. And I care more about how a lost civilization directly affects a dear friend, than how said civilization affected current technology. Those things that I care less about are still super important. I just don't need the game spending a disproportionate amount of time on them. I was so fucking happy to see this change in direction. And I felt it. It was tangible. I am here to tell you as a former skeptic that That's why despite got more emotional. all of the legitimate criticisms someone might have of the game, especially regarding ARR, the payoff is immense. I am so grateful for my friends who encouraged me to stick with it. What you get is a game that is made with love by developers who are also fans and active players of the game. You get an absolute ton of content, both old and new, that stays impressively relevant and doesn't exist purely as a series of hurdles you need to overcome just to get to the part of the game that everyone's actually playing. That's really oh, unusual this, for the scene of gold saucer. This is so nice. You know, this also kind of looks like when you see gold saucer for the first time in Final Fantasy VII. You know, just like in the desert, there's the gold saucer. Beautiful. I like this. For the genre. And it was such a refreshing change of pace. The casual and collector content is vast and varied. There's theme park rides, jumping puzzles, card games, mini games, treasure hunting. You know, the list is so damn long, dude. Uh now that I've actually reacted to a lot of Final Fantasy XIV, here is my experience, and they all have different names for their videos like one is like should i fap to final fantasy 14 that was basically his experience i don't even remember but this one is called final fantasy 14 isn't the game you think it is basically his experience in a nutshell but uh now that i've actually watched like at least like five different people's final fantasy 14 experience they all kind of like talk about the same stuff in the end of the day the mini puzzles the the jumping thing in kagane they all mention it it's like man deja vu uh oh and did i mention deeply customizable housing yeah it, that it too. has that too on the other oh. end of the spectrum the super hardcore content is also incredibly well designed and compelling Estimates claim that less than 4% of characters across all regions of Final Fantasy XIV have cleared the hardest content that the latest expansion has to offer, the Epic of Alexander Ultimate. It might be incredibly tough content, but talk to anybody who's cleared it and they'll tell you that it's fair. There's just so much on offer in this game that it's almost overwhelming. So, my...
I want to also say, like, the reason why I haven't really done my experience on Final Fantasy XIV video yet is because I am not even done with the story. I'm up to post Shadowbringers. I'm almost done. Almost done. So close. But at the same time, there's so many other things that I haven't even done. Like, there are so many things in Final Fantasy XIV and I haven't done them yet. I haven't even done a Savage. I haven't even done Stormblood's Extremes. There's a lot of little side quests or blue quests that I have to do to unlock certain things. Or I haven't even fully committed to a Beast Tribe. I, I haven't even really done much of the crafting and gathering. So it's hard for me to talk about all my experiences when there's only so much I can talk about. I guess I could make a video about my experience with Heaven's Word or ARR, something like that. It's preparing me in a sense that if I do ever make one, I won't make it like everyone else's. I'll try to make it different. My advice for people engaging or re-engaging with 14 is this. It's actually not to rush through the first part of the game just because what comes later is better. I know that some of the things that I've said in this video might suggest that I think that's a good idea. Unless you're just completely uninterested in stories in general, then don't. I think you should take your time. Unlike most other modern MMOs, this is not a race to the finish line. A huge part of FF14's value, at least for somebody like me, is actually in the journey. And that's not a cop-out. There's plenty to do when you get to that level cap. All of those things I've been complaining about are free. So what's the rush? <laughs> are ARR free. Might be a Can't complain. Slug. Yes. But you also get a decent taste of what's to come in Heaven's Ward, which is also included in the trial. Try out different jobs to see what pace of combat best suits you, because it varies a lot between them. Read the story, but go in with the right expectations. Go in with the knowledge that A Realm Reborn lays a solid foundation of lore that the story builds upon, but... Now, yeah, actually now that he says that it is free, because earlier I was like, yeah, there's so many people who just couldn't get past ARR and have left already, but because it's free all the way up to Heaven's Word. Heaven's Word is also free. That's actually a, like, that's probably the whole reason why Square Enix made it free all the way up to Heaven's Word so that they could have, you know, that the whole mountain to climb of ARR and post ARR, which was very hard, I know, to go through. And then once they see Heaven's Word, it's like, oh, this is really good. And then, and all of that's free. So because maybe like some people are like, wait, why was Heaven's Word free? That's like an expansion. To give them a taste a taste because like arr was made back when you know 1.0 1.0 was still around and they were trying very hard to save the game so giving all of that free for someone to just see if they like it or not is a good idea good marketing strategy it's not an accurate representation of the story as a whole not even close a realm reborn is in a lot of ways a story about a place while the following expansions are a lot more about its people. When fans of the game take to their socials to rant, rave, and defend the story of 14, they aren't talking about ARR. They are talking about something much grander in scale that not only builds over the course of the expansions, but also dramatically improves in its delivery over time. 14 is a game that has learned so much and is infinitely better for it, it's a yeah, game. it recently, Final Fantasy XIV recently won two awards at the, uh, I made a tweet about it actually. Final Fantasy won Best Game Community and still playing at the Golden Joystick Awards. So it won two awards. Damn shame that you don't get a good sense of that from the get-go. But maybe that will change. Final Fantasy XIV is not what you think it is. It is not the perfect mm. game created now by the title perfect makes developers like some sense. people would have you believe. But it's also not the fundamentally flawed games that others would have you believe either. Regardless of which side you find yourself leaning more towards... Hold I up! Did he tweet something a long time? Did Asmongold tweet something? Yep, I'm done with Final Fantasy IV. I gave it my best shot and really don't understand the hype. Thinking it's due to the fact that I'm not huge into the lore. 
Okay, well, ARR was really hard, even for me. Weave aesthetic. Slow, clunky gameplay. Lack of RPG mechanics, character customization, and non-existent PvP. This is Quinn. Also not the fundamentally flawed game. Oh my god, he goes even into it. Things I enjoyed outside of the waifus. The feeling of an alive world. Diversity of environments. Soundtrack. Oh yes, the soundtrack's very good. Um, actually the soundtrack gets even better and better and better. Community for the most part. I'm seeing a lot of repeating themes and I'm unsure if the anime avatar guys are slow in the head or just coping. I gave it my best shot to enjoy the game. Of course, I could have kept playing and beaten all the content. I'm a literal multi R1 god and play computer games for a living. Here's the thing. Final Fantasy XIV is really hard for streamers to get into because streamers are all about like go 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 let's get it fast like they're always worried that they're gonna lose viewers they always care about what their viewers think of it that's how i was be at the beginning of my journey of becoming a variety streamer before like as soon as i left hearthstone i was so worried that you know people wouldn't watch me playing other games or like what's patch doing this is so boring bye and that's why it's so hard to get like streamers to play final fantasy 14 like even i've asked other streamers i do i get it they're focused on a main game and they don't have time to dive into this new game that's really long at the start but going to be very good they just don't have that kind of commitment whereas if you're you know taking your time like streamers cannot take their time final fantasy is a game that you take your time with and it's a lot better that way but streamers cannot take their time with it even if you look at my journey with final fantasy 14 I couldn't really take my time as much as I wanted to take my time with it because Endwalker is coming. So I have like content brain. So I'm like, okay, if I'm going to start Final Fantasy 14, I want to do as much as possible reading the story to my community, but I want to make it in time of Endwalker. That's why I'm very close to Endwalker now. And it's like nine days for the early access. So I planned it all out. It's like a whole strategy. It's a business, you know, because content creators look at it as a business. It's so hard for them to play a game like Final Fantasy, unless their main genre of a game is MMORPG. Like that's kind of why like all that's why it's so easy for the WoW streamers to go into Final Fantasy 14 because, you know, why WoW, you know, apparently like got bad, pretty bad or stale. And then a bunch of them moved to Final Fantasy 14 and there was like big uprise in Final Fantasy 14. But there's like many other content creators who were willing to give it a try. Like me, I left Hearthstone, started playing Final Fantasy 14. And then we have Unaleska who mained Heroes of the Storm. And she now mains Final Fantasy XIV. And then we have this other girl who reacts to Final Fantasy. She used to play Overwatch quite competitively. She left that to play Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, Zeppla left World of Warcraft to play Final Fantasy XIV. And then it's crazy. All of us left a Blizzard game. <laughs> That's what we have in common. We left a Blizzard game to play Final Fantasy XIV. We took the leap of faith. And now we're here. ...that others would have you believe either, regardless of which side- Okay, that was the part I was trying to get into. Uh, Zach. <laughs> As my goal says he hates Final <laughs> Fantasy! That's July?! Oh my god, where is he yeah. now? Do people like show Asmongold, hey man, you, you said this, you said this, July 14. Regardless of which side you find yourself leaning more towards, I can tell you one thing, absolutely. Who were the heels? Final Fantasy wow. 14 is not a realm reborn. It's not. Not anymore. I can I can only imagine like every time I tweet something Final Fantasy and there's like maybe a couple people looking at my tweet like, Man, I tried that game. ARR wasn't for me. She crazy. She crazy. What's she doing? She thinks that game is so good. Yeah, I'm sure there's people out there who just like look at it that way when all of us are just like so in love with Final Fantasy 14 and they're just like, what the heck is wrong with them? <laughs> okay, that's the video, I guess. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate both your time and your attention. If you like the video, please hit that like button because this is a new style of content for me. So I wonder if you'll be making more Final Fantasy 14 like videos in the future.
on the flip side, if you didn't like it, please tell me why. The feedback is really important. <laughs> no, I think his video is very good. It was a very honest review of like how hard of AR. Not a lot of people in their Final Fantasy XIV experience videos explain what exactly is hard about ARR. He did a good job with explaining exactly why it's hard to go through it for him and how it is for some gamers. And it was like that for me too. And I think I would do a terrible job of trying to explain that.